Hi Shane. Okay, I have your bolt head here, your father's watch. Uh, so it's super exciting to see it here. Um, first impressions, your father really wore this watch. It is. It saw a lot of miles, and we know about that. Um, you can see that the bracelet is worn um, fairly heavily. If you look at the spacing, see the spacing right here? See how tight that is? That's what all of these should look like, but you can see how worn they are and pulled out. It doesn't really mean anything, it just it says this, this watch saw a lot of miles. And if you look at the stills of this photograph from your dad's movies, um, you can see that the bracelet was a lot tighter in those days, and that's what happens. Um, I do have aftermarket um, fishbone bracelets. They're not exactly correct to this. See, this is this is one width and this is a this is wider over here. These had kind of a staggered width thing, but I do have a tighter bracelet uh, that would be almost 100% correct for this if you wanted to do that. Normally, I would get this watch onto the time grapher and we would look at the numbers, but it's got two loose hands and I don't really want it to run with those two loose hands in there. I would like it to just stay put because if they get caught and dragged around the dial, it's gonna be bad. We can see though that the watch is running. I haven't put any power into it at all and it's still running on its own. That's a really good sign. Plus we know it's a one owner watch. So, you know, it, it's good. The only functional things I'm seeing right now is I've got some brassing along this plate here and a little bit along here that tells me that this winding bridge is loosening up. Now people, one of the reasons I'm excited about this watch is that um, this is the first Seiko that's ever been in here that was in movies. This gentleman's father um, produced and starred in a number of like Smoking the Bandit style, you know, cops and driving people movies in the 70s in Southern California. And so uh, it's, it's cool. I've got a couple stills up here. Let's see. This is from his movie Speed Trap. And you can see in here, uh, it's right there. There is, that is this bullhead. This is this man's father right there. And he's wearing, oh, hang on a second. And he's wearing the bullhead. And I look over here, we can see it just for a second. It's not this gentleman, it's that gentleman. Look, can you see that? Just for a second, you could see that bullhead on his wrist right there. Right there, that's his bullhead. If you look at it real closely, see it? That's the bullhead. And that's from Double Nickels. So we this thing was in at least two movies. Let's, uh, I don't want to put this seal back in here because it's, uh, it's a little rotten. But uh, let's put this case back on and let's flip it over. The watch is intact. The watch is original. So it's definitely running. The, this this hand right here had been replaced at a certain point, and uh, with an incorrect Seiko knockoff, and it's right here actually. And I don't want to, I don't want to push that around. I was going to let this come around to try to test the minute counter hand, but I don't want to do that because we got a loose hand here, and this this minute hand is loose too. It's original. It's definitely worn. Your dad put a lot of miles on it. That's for sure. He saw a lot of sun in this one too. You can see that the red Sunday is now more of an orange. And the, the loom's faded down. Uh, if this were my watch, all I would do is I would service it. I would do a serious servicing on it. I'd repair the paint on this hand. I'd replace this hand with the correct hand. Uh, I would probably reloom the dial in hands because these are pretty dark and down and gross looking. Um, once we clean up the case, uh, it'll look a lot better. I can talk to my business partner if you wanted and talk about refinishing this case. What he does, he doesn't refinish really so much as he he does, um, he remanufactures them to bring them back to stock. It's not cheap though. He can do it, but it's not cheap. And again, I have aftermarket bracelets that are solid stainless steel that my old business partner, Jonathan Koch, made. Uh, but you don't need to do that. This one's loose. I don't know that it's really in any danger. This link looks like it's opening up a little bit. I don't know. It's up to you. It's up to you. You can keep it totally original or we can kind of rework it, but original's not a bad thing. Okay. It's here. It's alive. I think it's a great project. I just need you to decide if we're keeping it stock or if we're restoring any other part of it cosmetically, if we're refinishing the case, if we're relooming the dial in hands, if we're replacing the bracelet, things like that. Okay, so you look at those things, 
you tell me what you think, but we can we can absolutely do it, not a problem. Okay, we'll talk to you later.